YouTube that are new to my channel. My name is Faith and this is my husband Jason. Hi. And I am an aspiring author, the mom of a one-year-old, and I just recently finished chemotherapy because I was diagnosed with stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma and I did six months of chemotherapy. So now today I've decided to interview my husband on his experience as a husband of somebody that went through six months of chemotherapy and was diagnosed with cancer. Thank, Thank you for joining me today for this interview. You're welcome. Thank you for this opportunity. Okay. <laughs> Big opportunity here. Okay, so I wrote down a few questions and feel free to give your honest response. Okay, first question number one. What was your reaction when I was first diagnosed with cancer? Um, so this was, many of you may know, it was longer than a six month process. This started back in January. So it was about a 10 month process with the chemo and the diagnosis. Um, so my first reaction in January, um, Faith and I were eating pizza and she felt these bumps. So I kind of thought she was crazy. And then she did a lot of uh, research on Google. She went to bunch of uh, doctors and whatnot. So at first I was very skeptical um, just because I thought cancer is something that's extremely rare and more common in older people, which I guess is true to an extent. Um, but then slowly uh, it sank in. So I was hoping every day when I went to work that this wasn't true, that it wasn't real. And then I guess in February, March, she had a, a needle biopsy um, then we were going out to dinner with our son the same day and the doctor called from the needle biopsy. We missed the call and there was a voicemail and we kind of pieced it together. And at, at that moment, I was like, this definitely doesn't seem good. Although the doctor didn't say what was going on, we just had a gut feeling based on um, Faith's educated research and some of the doctors she's been going to. Um, so it was, it was definitely very depressing. Um, it was unsettling. We wanted to find out more. So she got it confirmed with an excisional biopsy. And then when that happened, um, Faith called me, I guess, after the surgery, or I, I can't remember the specifics. Do, do, do you remember? Well, first I had the surgery and the, um, then it was the next oh, week the fo that I, the follow -up I went back visit, for yeah. the follow-up visit. Yeah, so I couldn't really go for the follow-up visit due to COVID protocols and things like that. Um, so I was on speaker with the doctor and Faith. So actually, it, it, it was obviously very upsetting, but in a sense, it was somewhat relieving to actually know what this strange thing was. Um, and then processing it, I guess, days and weeks later was oh man, like my wife has a, a deadly condition if not treated properly. It was very terrifying. Um, it was definitely upsetting, but I think I kept it together um, with work and family. Um, and just, it, it, it was tough. Um, and I just understood that faith was strong enough. We we're going to get through the process. And then we kind of went from there. Next question. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting answer. How do you feel this difficult time of illness affected our marriage? Um, it definitely affected our marriage because um, it was a, a big obstacle to get through. It was a stressful obstacle. It was also a very scary obstacle. It still is. Um, there's still an element of unknown if this will relapse or not, if there's any other secondary cancers that could come up, come up as a result of chemotherapy and whatnot. Um, it, it's, it's definitely made it challenging to, to be the spouse of someone who has cancer. Um, I guess I could empathize with any other spouses out there who have a sick spouse or sick child or daughter that they're pretty much the main person in, involved caring for. Um, I don't think it's made our marriage worse. It's definitely made it stressful. Um, we've definitely had some arguments, um, just because we've been really stressed mixing in, taking care of Zach, our one-year-old son, um, 
getting back to work for you in the last couple months. The summer was definitely a little different with um, still some COVID protocols and then obviously making sure your treatment was going well and what kind of reactions you would have. Um, I want to say I tried the best to be a good spouse. Um, I'm not sure if it was perfect, but it definitely was very challenging. Um, again, caring for my wife and caring for a hyperactive, um, constant energy one-year-old, mm -hmm. um, especially the weekends. Faith was very sick and had to be in bed for hours, although she did still give it her all. I tried my best. She put um, our kid to bed sometimes or helped out with getting stuff out of the refrigerator and whatnot. Um, it definitely, I would say, strained our marriage in some sense, but every marriage is is difficult and difficulty and adversity uh, makes things stronger. So I'd like to say this, we got through this and we'll continue to get through this. So um, this has definitely strengthened our marriage. Um, a lot of people don't have these tests to their marriage, maybe five years, 10 years, 20 years. We've been married almost three years in November. So um, it's definitely made it stronger and, and know we could get through anything but it I definitely agree. was challenging. There were days that we were not getting along because we were stressed out, but we got through it. So we know that we can get through these challenges and yeah. that we still love each other and are still gonna make it through any obstacles that come our way. Our, our love is continual, unwavering, and will prosper. It's never affected. Yes, I love you. I love you. I'm sorry uh, for the days I was cranky and I wasn't feeling well. That's okay. I'm, I'm sorry for not always having met your expectations, but I tried my best you know, to be helpful. I know you tried helpful. your best, but some days I, I, I was on a steroid roid rage or I was just cranky because I didn't feel well. And I know that that wasn't easy for you. Thank you. Okay. So the next question, what was the hardest part of this journey for you? Um, I'd say hands down the hardest part was continuing to raise a one-year-old and also meet the needs of my wife. Um, just some background information. Um, those of you who don't know, our son was born February 21st, 2020, which pretty much the world locked down two or three weeks after that. Um, so everyone was in isolation, quarantining, friends, family. So it was Faith and I raising a child completely by herself for pretty much six to 12 months straight with visitors, um, whether it was parents or friends. That wore masks and kept masks distance. So on a deck nearby, no six feet away, 10 feet away. Um, but people visiting was definitely emotionally supporting, but still waking up, being with Zach, just being with him constantly was very challenging. So um, also my father had a, a seizure and, and some illness last year during the pandemic as well. Um, so that was difficult on me. And then getting this news last winter into spring was, wow, we have something again that we need to overcome. So I knew we'd be able to, but more or less, I I'm, I'm, was definitely burnt out from the past year or so. And this on top of that um, made it even more challenging. Um, your question was... What was the hardest part? The hardest part. So it was obviously, like I said earlier, upsetting to know you had this, but I know the treatments work well. I know you're a strong person. I know you're young. I know... We selected the best healthcare providers. We've checked out four different places and this hands down is, is the best uh, option we've chose. So that was definitely stressful, but like I said, having to raise a one-year-old, especially on the days, four, five, six days where you couldn't contribute that much, although you still contributed a little bit, was tough. Like uh, I said, at times I felt like a single parent and I could empathize with anyone, any of your viewers that are single parents or caretakers. It's not easy. So 
Um, I still managed to go to the gym, which I appreciate you watch Zach a bit and just get stress out and whatnot. But it was definitely challenging mixing in a one-year-old with this. If we didn't have a baby, it would have been significantly easier. Or if we had one of these babies that are just stationary, like aren't that curious, it, it would have been... Um, He's a very active child. Yeah, so that was the most challenging. Okay. Looking back, is there anything you think we could have done differently? Um, I mean, I think we were pretty thorough about everything. We, like you said, we went to four different doctors and got four different opinions. And we've been happy with the doctor that we selected. And I appreciate that my husband did come with me through all the visits to help me make that decision because I didn't feel comfortable making that decision on my own. I felt like it was a huge decision selecting a doctor and the facility I would get my treatments at. So I think that that's important to do for anyone out there that is beginning this journey. I would definitely recommend checking out several doctors and hearing different opinions. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we could have done anything differently. I think we handled this as best as possible. Yeah, and, you know, from the time that I noticed the lumps on my neck, like, I was very proactive and, like Jason said, going to see doctors and checking out what was going on. So, like, I feel like, you know, that was something that we also did right, making sure of what was going on, even though everyone thought I was crazy at the time and that there was probably nothing wrong with me. You know, I still pursued it and went to the doctor. Last question. Okay. Did you have any other additional thoughts or advice to other spouses out there going through a similar scenario? Um, my advice would be just stay strong. Um, be true to yourself. So whatever emotions you have, um, don't feel bad to show those, whether you cry whether you get stressed and are <laughs> definitely was negative at times um i mean that that was my true like i couldn't hide how i was able to cope with this it was difficult um so just kind of be yourself know you'll get through it like this moment is going to strengthen hopefully you and your family and it is challenging um i i definitely like to thank um Faith's parents for being supportive of her. I know her mom talks to her for hours. Her dad also shows her support in, in different unique ways. Um, my parents for always talking to me on the phone or if I needed to go over there to hang out with, with Zach or whatever. Um, so thank you. Um, and also our friends and neighbors and also extended family, um, I can't thank you enough. Literally neighbors, friends, um, people we don't always see all the time or friends we do see occasionally. I know everyone's busy now, we have kids. Just reaching out through a text um, saying, hey, how's everything? When's the next treatment? Also people asking me how I was feeling as the caretaker. Um, I know one or two friends at least had their own family difficulties and they were one of the caretakers. So I really appreciate that. And if you're going through this yourself, just rely on your friends, neighbors, people were willing to go to shop right for us, send us meals. We've gotten probably at least five, $600 worth of gift cards um, was definitely useful for shopping or meals. Um, and, and just the support even though you don't always need to take it, but people are there for you. So just trying to be a good person and, and being thankful for people's help. Um, also, I just wanted to thank um, all the YouTube friends of my wife, Faith. Um, you guys mean the world to her. So thank you. Um, but yeah, if you're going through difficulty, um, it's normal. People have adversity in life. Hopefully you get through it and, and try to make the best of it. And I think we did and we'll continue this uh, journey. So um, that's my advice. Buckle up your seatbelt and uh, you'll definitely get through it and, and try to stay positive. Very well said. Yeah. Well, thank thank you. you for participating in this interview. You're welcome. My, my pleasure. I hope I was very candid. Uh, none of this was uh, scripted. So I was just speaking from my heart. 
and, and thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that someone out there can relate to this or it can help them in some way. And if you're not already subscribing to my channel, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.